the west. Um, and it's going to be a, a challenge. Fortunately, we have daylight now. We'll be able to have air resources up. We should see uh, a number of air tankers and helicopters flying in short order. You know, with the winds being high, obviously it can get to the point where we can no longer fly aircraft. As, as far as the wind conditions go right now, uh, the conditions are favorable for both types of aircraft, so our hope is that it remains that way throughout. I, I don't have any estimate. I know we have a number of areas that are without power. It's causing some challenges, too, and that the power runs some of our pump stations, and we find that some of our water systems and the hydrants are without water. Uh, we had a, uh, a battalion chief that was injured in a traffic collision last night, uh, bumps and bruises, he's been released from the hospital, should be okay. Uh, the growth, well, it, it, it grew incrementally, obviously it started as a small farm in San Paulo and it's grown to 45,000 acres. Um, it was just exponential, huge growth because the wind, 50 mile an hour is out of the east, we're just pushing it and growing it very, very large, very quickly. So our, our biggest areas of concern right now are the city of Ventura with structure protection and also as the wind picks up, so the cities of Santa Paula and Upper Ojai, the community of Upper Ojai. All of those areas have at least some form of both types of evacuation. Any other questions? on the winds, right? We're going to use the aerial assault basically on the flanks of the fire where we can actually stop it as it starts coming into the city. But generally the aerial assault's not very effective at the very head of the fire because the, uh, the fire can spot so far in advance of the fire, a quarter mile, a half a, a half a mile in advance of where the fire front is. So a retardant line doesn't provide much to stop embers that are traveling much, much further than the width of the retardant line. Normal for people, especially uh, you know, as we said, 27,000 people were evacuated. Almost none of them know the status of their homes. So our goal today is to get as much information out to the public as possible to repopulate the areas as soon as it's safe. That means we we don't have firefighting personnel in there. That the power lines have been addressed, and electric and power and gas issues have all been addressed. So that's our goal: is to uh, repopulate those areas in as orderly a fashion as possible. It certainly could be that in some areas. We'll go through and evaluate all of the different areas for the risk and repopulate as we deem safe. We've, we've added additional resources to patrol the burn areas that are evacuated for security reasons. So we'll have extra deputies out there uh, for that, specifically for that purpose, for that concern. I'm sorry? No, we have not. So I heard a question about the oil facility. As it, as it moves uh, towards the west, we do have a, a number of oil facilities in there. Fortunately, those all have uh, great roads that are very accessible, so the firefighters will be up there probably in our smaller Type 3 engines throughout the day. So uh, obviously our, our job is to communicate and get as much information to the residents that are affected and those that may be affected. There's still a, a high possibility that we will be evacuating additional areas. And so we will be providing information to the residents throughout the day. Uh, there's also a, a, a plethora of information that's available online also that the residents can go to. Yeah, that, 
those are challenges we always have during fires. It's a lot of the infrastructure is destroyed, cell sites go down, so it's a challenge with the communications, but as much as we can, we'll be communicating via the media, through uh, online, through text, and hopefully in person, too. Sheriff's Department. 